श्री गुप्ता जी सीनियर लर्न स्पीकर सी एम ए अशोक नवाल जी डिस्टिंग मेम्बर्स लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन गुड आफ्टरनून आई रियली लुक एट जी एस टी आई एम गेटिंग डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टैग बोर्ड फॉर जी एस टी आई ऑलवेज यूज दैट जी एस टी शुड बी ए गुड एंड सिंपल टैक्स दैट्स वॉट वी ऑल आर लुकिंग फॉर whether we end up getting gst in a real sense or not time will tell us but at this point of time what we look at we do not want to carry on the existing legacy in gst regime there are number of points which we are evaluating today and finding in model gst law not conducive and this knowledge series is highlighting those parameters and provisions which is not conducive but the objective is that can we go on agitating and saying that this gst is not good when you get all favorable vote in rajya sabha there is no negative except abstain by anna dmk and all 443 members present and voting a yes in lok sabha when those representative are saying yes to gst it's a time we should also start working on gst of course we would be having teething problem whenever we start with new item new levy new application it has its own uh, teething problem but teething problem does not mean that it is not good provided we know how to use it so what we need to start with using it perfectly even today we got five speakers you will find five speakers are different from their perception to present a particular topic somebody would be very much positive somebody would be little negative somebody would be little conservative somebody would be optimistic that is the dna and usp we carry on but when gst is going to be and looks like going to be by april 1 2017 not april then maybe first july maybe first october so we have to start gearing up before it is too late and today is the last day of knowledge series but we are continuing in a process of annual workshop series today we have highlighted three specific technical session one is the service sector impact and preparedness second is trader impact and preparedness and then manufacturing sector one one r we are going to discuss the impact and preparedness i know after going through this draft gst law you may have touched upon number of points but still there would be so many open nook and corners where you want some bridging to be done some clarity required and it will keep continue till the time we get rules as i stated that we got almost 195 section under draft cgst sgst and igst act and more than 183 places law says in a manner as prescribed so there is lot of things yet to be prescribed which will come in a times to come so we have to really wait and watch how quickly we are getting those prescribed provision so that we can analyze the provision and then see the impact but can we say we can't see the impact today we can definitely and lot many things i am going to tell you today only from draft model gst law hitting to service sector positive or negative now we need to analyze from our perspective that how these provisions are adding values or disadvantage to the organization if it disadvantage what are the corrective measure we require to take so that tomorrow we will use these gst provision for our advantage honorable prime minister talking about gst is a one nation one tax of course he is very positive and i admire that if this multiplicity goes away double taxation goes away 
cascading goes away and uniformity comes in, of course it is adding values. And it will definitely increase tax to GDP ratio, will give incremental GDP growth also. But from service sector perspective, what are the impact from model GST law? If you look at service sector today of our GDP, we got three pillars. We got agriculture, we got IIP, which includes manufacturing, and we got service sector. As per the last economic survey presented by Chief Economic Advisor, Dr. Arbin Subramaniam, service sector age 66% of our GDP. So this GST provision, which is enabling now state government, along with the central government, to levy GST on services, has very much wide impact directly or indirectly on goods and services. If you look at service sector, last year, 12.36% rate was there, which got increased to 14% from 1st June 2015, subsuming education cess and secondary higher education cess. Then 0.5% levied on Swachh Bharat cess from 15 November 2015, and then from 1st June 2016, another Krishi Kalyan cess, 15%. So first question effectively would be coming to your mind, whether service tax is going to be subsumed in GST, answer H. I'm not finding good answer. Yes. Swachh Bharat says. Yes. Krishi Kalyan says. Yes. Those who are saying yes. Oh, oh there's a no also. So, so this, this uh, parliament is not giving total yes. Of course, I'm telling you subjective. Just wait and watch. Just wait and watch. So when we talk about one nation, one tax, and subjectivity of continuance of this Swachh Bharat says, Krishi Kalyan says, infrastructure says, clean energy says, is going to create cascading in the system. We wanted that major, most of them indirect taxes must subsume in GST if at all we want to see uniformity and we want to done away with the cascading. But let's see, let's wait and watch. Now, what is the next impact on service sector today? You can take centralized registration. You're having offices in 29 states across India. But you can take centralized registration in Delhi provided you're having centralized accounting or invoicing system and file only two half yearly return and pay your service tax sitting in Delhi for services rendered from 29 offices across India. So now this concept is going away because GST is going to be destination-based consumption tax. So what happened wherever you are providing services, the state where services are being destined or consumed, that state will collect SGST component of supply of services. So we move from centralized registration to decentralized registration. So one registration getting converted into 29 registration. You may have option, that is option provided, that vertical wise you can take registration even within the state. So it depends upon the taxpayer to decide whether they want to have separate registration, vertical wise, or they want to have consolidated registration. But we are moving from centralized to decentralized first. We file two half yearly return. Now we may require to file 61 return per registration. Imagine a situation if you have taken 29 registration then 29 registration into 61 return. And how it would be? Let's listen to it. The draft business processes on return has prescribed eight return. Outward supply return to be filed by 10th of next month. 
invoice supply return to be filed by 15th of next month and consolidated return to be filed by 28th of next month. So these three returns are compulsory. Then we got compounding dealer return by 18th of next quarter. Then we got non-resident foreign supplier within seven days of last date of registration. We got ISD return by 13th of next month. We got TDS return by 10th of next month. Then we got annual return by 31st December of next financial year. So how many return a service tax payer who would be GST taxpayer has to file? GSTR 1, outward supply, GSTR 2, inward supply, GSTR 3, consolidated. If you are ISD along with, then GSTR 6. If you are tax deductor somehow, then you have to file another return, which is GSTR 7. So five return per month. Multiplied by 12, 60, and one annual return, 61 return per registration. So our life is going to change from two half yearly return to 61 return per registration. And that too, we are taking 29. So I do not know it is towards ease of business or unease of business. From trader perspective, I'm sure. Asokji is going to tell you this is a good measure, but from service tax SAC perspective, we are representing, we are talking to the government of India. We are also saying, sir, find out some mechanism whereby we can have some ease of business. But looking at the business processes, they have got their own limitation. What is outward supply return? I'm giving services to you. So I would be filing my outward supply return by 10th of next month. That will be auto-populated for you as an inward supply return, which need to be freeze by 15th of next month. Auto-populated. You need not require to fill up any data. Except the data which is not filled up by your outward sub supply supplier. For that, you can take provisional credit. And this mismatch can be corrected within the specified time period. If it is not corrected, then whatever provisional credit taken by you need to be paid along with interest. Then consolidated returns. So my outward supply becomes inward supply for you. And both are consolidated by 28th of next month, GSTR 3. And you will deposit net GST liability. So they want to follow this automization. From their perspective, it is important. So how they are going to minimize the number of return, I am not aware of. But looks like to me they will carry on with this process. So are we ready? Whether my system is ready, ERP system. I may be small service provider, I may be large, medium or foreign MNC. But we all have to gear up. Now, when I talk about SME and MSME sector, then we talk about registration. Today, under service tax, we have to take registration when aggregate value of taxable turnover crosses 9 lakh rupees. And we have to charge service tax when crosses 10 lakh rupees. So, what is the provision in a draft model GST law? Provision says, if aggregate turnover crosses 9 lakh rupees and it is 4 lakh rupees for northeastern state including Sikkim, we have to take registration. If crosses 10 lakh rupees and 5 lakh for northeastern state including Sikkim, GST need to be charged. So this aggregate turnover is becoming very, very important. And I have said in the past, Retrating once again, the aggregate turnover includes taxable turnover, non-taxable turnover, exempted turnover, and export turnover. Aggregate turnover includes all four items, but today the threshold amount only talks about aggregate value of taxable. So let's take a situation, I got 11 lakh rupees 
aggregate turnover which includes 9.9 .9 lakh rupees non taxable turnover virtually i am being given no benefit i need to take registration and into charge gst so whether this is really conducive supporting to small sme and msme sector looks like to me these provisions are really stringent one and that a compulsory registration process irrespective of any threshold amount for interstate supplies reverse charge tds deductor isd e-commerce operator aggregator providing services under trade name or brand name or agent supplying goods and services on behalf of the principal compulsory registration then this question will come to your mind who all are excluded by the way because with this provision looks like everyone is included so who all are excluded the three specific taxable person are excluded from taxable person definition if employee providing services to the employer we need not require to take registration so positive so positive well, i'm giving some food for thought let's say you're working for airtel or reliance and they have given that uh, airtel card for office usage but you use that particular card even for personal use we use that we get number of personal call now what happened to those personal use just keep it in your mind we will deliberate on this topic as well otherwise employee giving services to the employer no gst or you are engaged exclusively in supplying out non taxable goods and services exclusively supplying of non taxable goods and what is the meaning of non taxable that is not chargeable to gst and last importation of services for personal use up to a specified amount is not that person need not require to take registration now who are a taxable person broadly if we want to understand taxable person means any person who is carrying on business in india or in the state of india and you all know this uh, model gst law talks about applicable to all over india including jammu and kashmir but service tax provision is applicable to all over india except jammu and kashmir or you are registered or you, you are required to be registered in terms of schedule 3 liability to be registered there is schedule 3 provided there in certain matter is being prescribed which is required to be registered schedule 3 central government state government local authority these are taxable person except specified transaction and these specified transaction are prescribed in schedule 4 of model gst law only agriculturalist is being kept out from taxable person definition so this is pertaining to registration now moving to a compounding dealer composition scheme right sme and msme sector always look want to have some kind of benefit and advantage for sme and msme sector under vat provision you have seen composition up to threshold amount similar provision is being prescribed under section 8 of model gst law and this provision says if aggregate turnover does not exceed 50 lakh rupees first criteria it should not exceed 50 lakh rupees then you can go for composition scheme provided you are not allowed to take gst credit you are not allowed to charge gst on your outward supplies that is a broad provision now my question goes to all of you once again whether a service provider who is having aggregate turnover less than 50 lakh rupees can go for this composition scheme 
एनी वन वाई नो सो ही सेंग नो बट टू हाईलाइट टू ऑल ऑफ यू देर अनदर प्रोविजन विद सेज दिस कॉम्पोजिशन स्कीम इज नॉट अवेलेबल फॉर इंटर स्टेट सप्लाईज ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस सो आम ए डेली बेस्ड चार्टेड अकाउंटेंट और कॉस्ट अकाउंटेंट और कंपनी सेक्रेटरी आई हैव गॉट लॉट मेनी क्लाइंट इन नोएडा एंड गुड़गांव एंड आई एम विलिंग दम so it is interstate supplies of services hence i can't go for it so this virtually this benefit is not available to a service sector so you would be asking why they have made this provision to my mind it looks like they have picked up the vat provision and pasted in model gst law they never thought of imagine a situation that for service sector virtually we are providing services interstate and you are barring me that interstate supplies is not eligible for the composition scheme drawback need to be corrected that is what we all are representing so but why this composition scheme is there because it is breaking the input chain and defeating the purpose of gst so he is again asking sir why this scheme is there so sometime what happen you are a small sector you are not interested to avail credit or charge gst you want to have just one return compounding dealer return ease of business sir i want to buy limited amount of you know doing uh, purchase sell please allow me some other benefit wherein i need not require to get into your whole some compliance procedure to my mind just to cater their needs we have this kind of provision and we need to have it religiously look at the small sector they are not educated class they believe in offline mode they don't know online mode they can't file online return they can't make even any ft payment which i have not touched upon as on as of now so you have to have some mechanism to support small and medium enterprises move further so we have discussed that registration return and then the taxable person then now talking about levy now gst going to be levied and levy section is under section 7 of model gst law and this says there shall be levied a tax in the name of cgst and sgst for intra state supplies within state igst for interstate supplies at a rate specified in the schedule so that schedule is not provided as yet and what would be the rate just pause i am going to tell you that this rate implication also on service sector so they are going to provide this rate in a schedule specified so today we are registered only with the service tax department central government tomorrow state are going to charge sgst on the services meaning thereby now we need to have two registration with the central and state and registration i told you from centralized to decentralized registration now under section 7 they have also said there would be certain specified goods and services which would be falling under reverse charge by way of notification issued by central and state government so this is the levy portion now question comes gst applicable on what gst is applicable on supply of goods and services since i'm handling a service sector i want to pay attention and want invite your attention on service sector and what is the meaning of term supply which is very very important right section 3 talks about definition of supply and supply start with supply includes so i'm saying this term is not defined it is inclusive definition first of all includes all forms of supply of goods and after that do you want any other provision please tell me honestly 
after saying supply includes all forms of supply of goods and services do you want any other provision please say yes or no no you know you're saying you you're looking for something else do you want something else no no you want let's listen then <laughs> you won't listen then then they say it includes such as sell transfer barter exchange licensing leasing renting disposal these eight terms are being prescribed that huh i will i will come to that so he is immediately saying gift is now chargeable to gst so one provision says importation of services whether or not for consideration whether or not in the course of furtherance of business so importation of services means you are taking services from someone who is outside india whether or not for consideration whether or not in the course of furtherance of business so let's say i am nri i am stationed at usa and you are constructing a building in delhi you wanted to architect design that building so you requested me bimal you are a relative of mine why can't you do you know designing and give it to me importation of services whether or not for so you are not going to pay me your delhi based right are you going to pay me okay assume you are not going to pay me whether or not in the course or furtherance of business meaning thereby gst applicable up to a specified amount it is not taxable otherwise gst applicable further down the line supply includes supply without consideration under service tax provision what is the definition of service today any activity carried out by a person for another for consideration if there is no consideration no service tax but under gst it includes supply even without consideration as specified in schedule 1 and schedule 1 talks about five specific item permanent transfer of business asset business asset or services being used for non business or personal use asset retained after deregistration and then comes supply of goods and services both by a taxable person to another taxable person or non taxable person that is without consideration so he was referring to gift free supplies so now the concept of consideration even though you take opinion from me and i don't charge any consideration today no service tax but tomorrow gst gst no free lunch no free dinner you may come back and say sir how they will come to know that you have given free to me right maybe this idea may come to your mind sir how department will come to know that you have given me a free opinion then they got number of you know authorities to look that some kachcha slip and pakka slip <laughs> during investigation and inquiry they catch hold of you and then they are going to charge so what would be the value of that free supplies and valuation i'm going to discuss the important aspect the way valuation provision is being drafted it is being kept only goods in a mind for service sector it is hitting hitting badly we'll discuss what happened that reliance and airtel example now i've given you the airtel card reliance jio card you are using personally so services are being used for non business or personal use right am i right question is whether gst applicable yes. applicable perfect so we all agree am i am i right Agre agreeable yes. what would be the value huh what would be the value oh value enter so you are going to take my monthly bill where it contains 2000 numbers of call made and out of 2000 number of calls somebody has to sit down and say this is personal call and this is Um, he is answering on valuation but look at the 
operational inconvenience. How you will just 2,000 calls made in a month, which is personal and which is business, first of all. So somebody has to sit down and he has to identify it as a business call, it is a personal call. And that too, if you are doing that, how you say that they will rely upon you? And they, they means department. So look at the kind of inconvenience in terms of this provision. And secondly, you wanted me to pay GST on this particular supply, but GST credit provision says that to the extent of non-business use or personal use, your credit need to be restricted. So your inward would be restricted only to the extent of business purpose. So credit denied. On outward, we have to pay GST. So double. Are you getting this message? So these provisions are really an eye-opener. And we need to look at that very sincerely and seriously. That may have number of ramifications. Let's move further than they provide. It's, yeah. I will, I will tell you. Allow me. I've got discontent. I will go along with that. Now, there is schedule 2, and schedule 2 says there are certain matter that would be treated as supply of goods or supply of services. So schedule 2 is very good. It provides certainty that there are certain matter that would be treated as supply of goods and supply of services. It is very, very good. Because today we are struggling, if you look at declared service category, what are declared service category? Construction, IPR, IT software, right to use of movable goods, works contract, AC restaurant, we charge both taxes, service tax and that. Now they are saying these all are supply of services. Very, very good. Am I right? Let's do two case study, good or bad. See, for me, it's very, very good if rate for goods taxability and service taxability are kept same. If rate are differing, GST rate are differing on goods and services, again, this is going to open up the Pandara's box. How? Works contract and AC restaurant are deemed sale of goods in terms of Article 366.29a. And this article is still continuing post-GST regime. So this article says works contract and AC restaurant is a deemed sale of goods. But the schedule says this is supply of, so what is correct position? If rate varying, then it will create a problem. For rate, what is going on today? See, Congress wanted that 18 persons should be capped in the Constitution Amendment Bill. We all are uh, saying that that keeping uh, this GST rate in the constitution is not correct because for changing the rate either upward or downward, downward will not happen. But for upward, they need to follow that process which is a lengthy process. So it should be delegated perfectly, all right. And you must have seen Raj Rajya Sabha proceedings. Congress, I, then Finance Minister Mr. P. Chidambaram was repeatedly asking Arun Jaitley ji that please ensure the house that you will not keep rate more than 18%. What Arun Jaitley ji said, that rate is not dependent upon me, it is going to be decided by GST council. But we will try to see Aam Admi, Arvind Kejriwal. Rest assured, we will not, you know, betray him on a lighter side. Don't take me otherwise. So what happened immediately after 3rd of August, we started getting different, different voices from government side. They say, no, no, state finance minister wanted a higher rate for GST. We wanted to keep it 18%, but state want higher rate. So for goods taxability, no problem. Because today on goods, indirect tax, approximately 27, 28%. 
Even if 20% rate is being fixed, you have advantage. But what about services? Which is 15% taxable today. If you take it to 18%, and that to 66% of GDP comes from service sector, can you understand the impact of this pricing rate on overall GDP from short to medium term? It is going to hit, believe me, going to hit. And why I'm saying this rate is very, very important because 18% rate even kept on services looks like to me, short to medium term, it will going to add inflation, service inflation in the market. The first part. Second part, if two different rates are being kept for goods and services, then the dispute of whether there is a supply of goods or supply of services, and I have given live example of works contract and ACJ student, which is still deemed sale of goods in terms of Article 366.29a, and it's a supply of services in terms of Schedule 2 in the model GST law. So need to be looked into very sincerely. After doing this, let's move to the next component, time of supply, POT. Service sector is well versed with the point of taxation. They have no problem. So you will understand very easily. But those who are supplying goods, they are not. They pay excise only on manufacturing. They pay VAT only on sale of goods. But for service sector, either you pay under forward charge, under reverse charge, two mechanism. Am I right? And third model is the aggregator model. But now they have given five specified cases, forward charge, reverse charge, continuous supply of services, and when supply seizes under a contract and specified cases. And within that provision, let's listen. Forward charge. What is forward charge? Supplier has to charge GST. Am I right? It is the earliest of the following. What is earliest of the following? Date of issuance of invoice within specified time period. Right? Time period can be 30 days, 45 days, as specified. If invoice is not issued within the specified time period, then the date of completion of provision of services. Please pay attention. Date of completion of provision of services. Third, date of receipt of payment. And last, date of receipt of services in the bookshop recipient. Let's do case study. What is the meaning of date of completion of provision of services? When you want to levy GST on supply, why this term is being used, completion of provision of services? So let's understand one example so that you can all uh, become, you know, understanding of this particular issue. You come to my office for opinion. I give you verbal opinion. Supply mate, right? And immediately you go out and uh, communicate to your board of directors and say, Mr. Jain has given this, this opinion. Let's implement in this manner. But my opinion will follow after a month, two months, three months. That is completion of provision of services. Am I right? So what is the definition? Why they have kept completion of provision of services? When supply is going to be chargeable, why they are again picking up completion of provision of first part. Second part, they say date of receipt in the books of recipient. Please tell me if forward charge is my liability. How do I come to know when you have shown receipt in your books of accounts? Tell me, sir. And if we are fighting like India, Pakistan, I will not be able to see your books of accounts. You might have uh, booked as a receipt, liability fall back on my head under forward charge. This forward charge. Come to reverse charge. Reverse charge normally, what is the provision rule 7 of POT rule? Very simple date of payment, provided payment made within three months. If payment is not made within three months from date of invoice, then the date following the end of three months would be the POT. Am I right? For associated enterprises, Earliest of the following, date of debit or date of making payment, whichever age. Am I right? Now look at the provision in draft model GST law. 
earliest of the following. Date of receipt of service, because now you have to pay GST. Date of receipt of service. Date of receipt of invoice. Date of making payment. And date of debit in your books of accounts. So first case study. Now this date of debit, this concept is applicable only for associated enterprises today. But tomorrow it is going to be applicable to associated and non-associated enterprises. Are you getting it? I hope you are with me. Am I right? Say yes. yes. So you are with me. So this is the first part of it. This is a change in reverse charge mechanism. Now next part comes when supply ceases under the contract. So let's say you have come today for taking opinion from me or you wanted some diagnostic review to be done by Bimal Jain. Bimal Jain start working on 10th of August. But all of a sudden on 30th August you come back and say, Mr. Jain, we do not want your diagnostic services. So please tell me, now in this case, I have started my work from 10th of August. I'm working till 30th August. All of a sudden, you wake up and come back to me and saying that you don't want my services. Supply seizures under a contract. With a GST going to be applicable. The first component. As per the provision, it is deemed supply. A supply deemed to have been made when supply seizures under a contract. So if you come back on 30th August and say you don't want diagnostic review, now what happened being forward charge, neither you are paying me because you will not pay me, right? But provision says it's a deemed supply. GST applicable. First question. Second question. Sir, I have not received any consideration. At the same time, I incurred time and efforts which has gone west. Now, you want me to pay GST? Are you getting it? So, these are the provision. Okay. We got certain new services taxable, right? And we struggle. Rule 5 of POT rule can override. Section 67A, right? We struggle, right? Somewhat this section 67A got amended this union budget 2016. Now we are saying rule 5 may have implication, but no provision prescribed what will happen for the new services taxable in post GST regime. And there's the one section 14 which talks about change in rate of GST. And this particular provision is very simple. Rule 4 of POT rules. There are three milestones. Date of rendering of service which is date of supply of service now, date of issuance of invoice, and date of receipt of payment. So two prior to change in rate, old rate, two after change in rate, new rate applicable. So this is what the provision for time of supply. Now move to place of supply. It's very, very important. And now I really want an eye opener. You will see in the provision made in place of supply provision. Why place of supply required? It is required to determine whether the transaction is intrastate or import or export. So what is intrastate? Intrastate is being stated when location of supplier and place of supply is in the same state. Location of? Please keep it in your mind and please go along with me. Location of supplier and place of supply is in same state. It is intrastate. And what is interstate? Location of supplier and place of supply is in different state. So what is location is important. Location of supplier becomes important. And for reverse charge, location of recipient is important. Am I right? So location as defined place of business where registration is being taken. That would be the location. If services are being supplied from any other location other than place of business, then the fixed establishment 
and what is fixed establishment it is being characterized by sufficient degree of permanence of human and technical resources if it is not fixed establishment then the establishment most directly concerned which is supplying services if it is not the case then usual place of residence of provider supplier or recipient that is the provision of location of supplier and recipient so you have to very much careful and i'm going to discuss some other two three example and then i will tell you the importance of this one so if it is intra state cgst if it is inter state igst so section 5 and section 6 are important section 5 is important for place of supply for goods and section 6 is important for place of supply for services now let's come back you'd be knowing place of provision of services rule 2012 place of provision of services rule 2012 was important from import and export perspective but now place of supply important because now state is going to charge gst on services so it's very important that you should identify a transaction whether it is intra state or interstate normally under place of provision of services rule what was the provision they have given default rule b2b and b2c if b2b location of recipient if b2c location of supplier otherwise performance based rule 4 rule 5 immovable property rule 6 event rule 7 greatest portion of services as specified in rule 4 5 and 6 provided in taxable territory rule 8 we are both are located provider and receiver rule 9 location of service provider for specified services banking and financial online database and access retrieval service intermediary service and renting of means of transport transportation of goods rule 10 transportation of passengers rule 11 and value added services while on convenience rule 12 so what is the change now change is very very important b2b and b2c kept as it is if it is b2b one uh, business to another business tin to tin location of recipient if it is business to consumer location of supplier if address is not available for the recipient let me do two three case study for all of you now they have given specified rule for immovable property performance based transportation of goods transportation of passenger banking and financial services let me do two three case study so that you can understand the importance of place of supply provision immovable property location of immovable property now that is the place of supply so let's say i am in delhi i am registered in delhi i am going to mumbai right and i'm stay, staying in a le meridian hotel please tell me for le meridian hotel it would be intra state supply or interstate supply again i'm repeating i'm registered in delhi i'm a chartered accountant i'm going to argue a case in bombay high court i'm going to mumbai staying in a le meridian hotel mumbai and now this uh, le meridian hotel is giving services to bimal jain please tell me for le meridian hotel it's intra state supply or interstate supply ha huh? intra or inter intra sure anyone saying inter anyone saying inter okay perfect so this house is agreeable it is intra state so they are going to charge cgst and now next question whether bimal jain can take credit of sgst of maharashtra in delhi or cgst which is pertaining to now question may comes whether cgst is going to be central levy for throughout the country common pool or it would be limited only state perspective i'm just opening food for thought first of all i will not be able to take credit of sgst of maharashtra am i right cgst again subjective issue let's take another example that i am in delhi i am a land i got i am the owner of property located in bangalore immovable property 
Now, I got architect in Delhi. He want to go into design that particular property. Both are located in Delhi. Supplier and recipient. But property located in Bangalore. Please tell me for Bimal Jain, who is your owner, recipient, and the architect who is giving services to Bimal Jain in Delhi for a property located in Bangalore, whether it would be intrastate or interstate? Hmm? Interstate. Interstate, am I right? So IGST is applicable. What Bimal Jain is going to do with that IGST? If he does not have any interstate supplies, he can use... Now, now you can say IGST credit can be used sequentially for IGST, CGST or SGST. So within two examples, I created a combination of situation. And this combination of situation is going to have ramification on your supply chain, on your business operation. Let's take another example, transportation of goods. If you look at rule 10 of existing POP rule, it says destination of goods. So if goods are coming from Germany to India, reverse charge, applicable. If it is going from Mumbai to Germany, perfect. So let's take an example and proceed further. What is the provision says? Provision says for transportation of goods. If it is B2B, if you are providing services to a registered taxable person, then the location of recipient, location of recipient. If you are providing services to non-registered business person, non-registered taxable person, then the location with delivery is handed over for transportation. So let's take an example so that you can understand the provision. Let's say I'm in Delhi and transporter located in Haryana, Gurga, and my Goods are going to be transported to Mumbai. Please tell me it would be interstate or intrastate. Now you all have started thinking. And that is what I wanted. Now see, I have just, I have just done the second analysis of this transportation of goods. And it says if business to business, location of recipient. Here, even the goods are going to Mumbai. Location of recipient, Delhi, who will get SGST component of IGST, Delhi, not, are you getting it? So those provisions are going to have big, big ramification. Transportation of passengers, let's say, I'm creating one example. You are uh, starting from uh, Rajdhani, from Delhi to Kolkata, Delhi to normal provision when you embark on a particular aircraft or any convince, right? That is the normal provision. But provision is changing now. What provision says, if services provided to registered person, then the location of recipient, location of, if it is provided to non-registered person, B2C, then where from you embark? Where from you embark? So same situation, I'm uh, embarking at Delhi for Calcutta. Right? And let's assume I'm a Gurgaon based uh, resident. I stationed at Gurgaon, not in Delhi. And I'm a registered taxable person. Please tell me intrastate or interstate. So railway is providing services. They will look at my location recipient. I'm registered. I'm in Gurgaon. Even though I'm embarking from Delhi station. So concept is changing for place of supply provision. I'm sure you might not have noticed such provision which is going to change your business model. Configuration. So this is the high time you should start looking into these provision and start evaluating. Where all I need to have registration? Where all I need not require to have registration? Whether that would be intrastate or interstate. And one example I'm telling you, section 53. And now you will understand the importance of place of supply. Section 53 says, let's say you assume a transaction as intrastate. So you'd be charging CGSTN. 
but that turned out to be an interstate transaction. IGST should be applicable. Now, question comes, you would have charged CGST and SGST. You have paid also to the government. Can you adjust CGST and SGST, which has turned out to be an IGST transaction? Please tell me, yes or no? You all are sincerely now listening. It means now you're thinking uh, these are ramifications. Why I need to determine place of supply? It is very important. And section 53 says, no, you can't adjust. You have to pay IGST liability separately and go for refund for CGST and SGST. And therein you have to also prove unjust enrichment. Are you getting it? So it has got wide, wide ramification. I hope you all are getting my practical example. Am I, am I clear? Am I? Okay. Valuation, what it says, transaction value paid or payable for supply of goods and services. When supplier and recipient are not related and price is the sole consideration. Section 4 of Central Excise Act 1944. This valuation provision is a combination of Central Excise Act, Section 4, transaction value, reimbursement from Finance Act 1994, and custom valuation for similar product and services. See, you can have valuation for similar product, but can you have valuation for similar services? Mr. Sok Nawal is also giving opinion and I'm also giving opinion. With our, our prices would be same. That is what now we have to start thinking. See, I'm giving you one food for thought. Let's say uh, I have given one opinion to you. FOC, free of cost, gift. Free of cost. GST applicable, right? Now question comes, what would be the valuation? You will say value for similar services. Goods or services of like kind and quality. But I have not given this opinion in my lifetime. So how can I value? I can't value, right? So goods of like kind and quality made by other person. Now he, Asokji is giving this uh, opinion for 1 lakh rupees. Maybe Bimaljan only 25,000 rupees. Put Mr. Hari Salve just next to him. <laughs> oh, oh, now transfer pricing. We are struggling under Income Tax Act for international, then they started with domestic. I do not know, they come to Delhi now. Arvind Ji ne suna nahi wali baat. Bana Delhi mein transaction value. And we struggle in SBB valuation. Custom authority always says, I am undervaluing. Income tax authority always says overvaluing. Oof. And transaction value includes FOC, reimbursement, royalty and technical fees, subsidies linked to the supply, post supply discount, any miscellaneous expenses, Oof. what is left out. And taxes other than CGST, SGST, and IGST. So existing product like petroleum where existing taxes are alleviable becomes part on tobacco central excise applicable becomes the valuation for GST for tobacco products. Then if you can't do comparison with Tasokji, then computed value method. Even though you can't do that, then they got the option. They will come and do value the product and services. And how valuation done by them, we have experience under custom SVB valuation. So this is the valuation provision. Now GST, ITC, input tax credit. Why we require GST? We want to have seamless flow of credit. Are we getting seamless flow of credit in GST? That is the big question. First, they have used the concept of business. Very good one. Now they are opening up. If you procure in the course of furtherance of business for outward supply, GST credit would be available. But again, they have given negative. Negative list, credit not available on construction, credit not available on motor vehicle, credit not available on employee related. They want to carry on with the existing legacy in post GST regime. And that too they are limiting period one year. And then reducing this one year by another provision, if you don't avail credit by 30th September, of next financial year or by due date of annual return, whichever is earlier, your credit availment gone. 
even one year period is reduced. Let's say February, you have to avail credit, you have not availed credit, your time limit open to you only 30th September of next financial year. And then matching concept. You pay me a GST, but if I don't pay being supplier, you can't avail credit. That is restricted in GST ITC. And if you look at ITC pre-registration, there is also a rider. They say, if you are taking registration within 30 days from the liability to be registered, then whatever credit standing on just preceding day, from the date liability to be registered, you can avail credit on input, input in semi-finished goods, input in finished goods, and input services related to those inputs. But what about other input services? I do not have other person here. He was saying, sir, input services, when you take, it is consumed instantly on that day. I said there are certain services which goes on a period basis, AMC services. And for input services, they are not talking about credit. For capital goods, how credit would be available, they are not talking about GST, ITC. Now coming to the transition provision, which is now preparation. Let's assume appointed date would be 1st April 2017. I'm centralized registered. They will allow me provisional registration. And within six months, I need to provide all the information. But first of all, we are moving from centralized to decentralized. Meaning thereby, I need to have registration in all the state where from I'm making supply. So it's not the provisional. You need to really go back and tell them, sir, this is the one centralized registration. Don't give me provisional. Now I need to have 29 registration because I'm supplying from all 29 states. They are talking about, if you are showing Sanvet in your return, you would be given credit in CGST. But any input on which you have paid the VAT, you are not VAT registered today. So what happened? I will not get SGST credit. That is lost. That is going to be used for my outward supply. <coughs> but there is no corresponding VAT credit available because I am neither registered under VAT nor I have shown my VAT return. So there should be some mechanism notional method that whatever VAT I paid inputs some percentage should be given post GST regime which is going to be used for outward supply in the course of furtherance of business important aspect which you would be interested contract entered prior to April 2017 but subsequently you are doing upward revision or downward revision post GST regime for upward it's the outward supply you have to issue a debit note Pay GST. Downward revision, credit note can be issued, but recipient need to reduce the credit component. But now the last, which is important one, long-term contract and works contract. You may be, you are presently executing long-term contract or works contract, or you are going to enter into long-term contract. And that will continue for three years or five years or six years. If existing contract, I'm sure there is no clause of GST. And sometimes price is inclusive of all taxes. And there's no reference of new taxes leviable. How you're going to do addendum? Start negotiating. There may be costs on either or party. First part. Second part. If you're entering into new contract, assuming 1st April 2017 would be appointed day, how you can plug GST component? in the contract itself. If contract does not talk about GST, how you can start looking into those clauses which is going to help any taxpayer? So those are all permutation combination need to be done. And coming to the last component from service sector perspective. I'm being reminded for five minutes, so I need to sum up within one or two minutes more. My only point to all of you would be that service sector is a 66% of GDP. We are moving from centralized to decentralized. We are moving from two half yearly return to minimum three return into 12 and plus one annual return. And I have not talked about first return and final return. So when you take registration, first return. And when you surrendered for cancellation, then you have to also file final return. All final from my side. 
so those provision and payment part sme and msme sector i got a call from someone from economic times yes come so he was referring to me and telling me sir please tell me some of the inputs for small and medium enterprises how they are going to be benefited from gst regime i said first the threshold amount of 10 lakh rupees and that includes taxable non taxable exempted and export in delhi threshold amount under vat is 20 lakh rupees first part and that talks about taxable and they normally works on offline mode they never works on online mode are they being educated and secondly vat department who is going to adjudicate please tell me they are not well versed how service is going to be taxable and that to intra state and inter state which i have just done case study before all of you you must have started thinking yes place of supply provisions are very important to determine a transaction either to be intra state or inter state if you wrongly pay taxes can't be adjusted you have to pay fresh and go for a refund and that and then you prove unjust enrichment also so there are lot many provision coming from service sector perspective but before concluding my remarks let me tell you one thing these are only teething problem i am not saying that we are having problem these problems are being given on public domain these law is being provided on public domain if you feel these are problem please come back with a suggestion and that is what government of india is looking at that is what they are giving time to us that we should run the provision and come back with a constructive suggestion so that we can say this is what correction we are looking for with this thought process thank you thank you to each and every